after you have your all of your your bonuses if you're out of range if you're in a long range you've got your negative modifier now you're going to make your attack roll and this is basically an ability test versus the defense of the target that you're hitting pretty straightforward there's going to be bonuses for both you and the creature you're attacking so when you make your attack roll you're going to roll the 3d6 the two uh, two dies of one color and the other die which is called the stunt die of an off color you're going to roll all three you're going to take whatever modifier for that weapon that you're going to be using you take that and add it in and we'll kind of go on a little side note right here when making attacks when you make attacks you can up you, you know you can basically get a better attack roll by taking focuses and also you can also come down here and take a look at uh, like the fight like the the weapons every weapon is either part of fighting or accuracy now accuracy uh, is your you know it's an ability fighting is an ability now all the weapons are in those two categories so if you are more of a uh, say you're using a ranged weapon like a bow now you would use accuracy 3d6 plus your accuracy versus the target's defense <clears throat> so if your your accuracy is a three it would be 3d6 plus three for your accuracy now say just like we talked about the healing bonus from heal uh, and we also talked about uh, the bonus uh, what, what bonus was it down here that we were talking about that uh, you could oh, for your uh, uh, oh yeah for your melee attacks and stuff you can also take your accuracy focus for bows because you can see here uh, there's an accuracy focus for bows and that'll give you a plus two and at level 11 plus you can invest another focus upgrade and raise it to three at level 11 plus so you could go to 3d6 plus your you know your plus three accuracy plus your focus of plus two and then your plus two accuracy your plus two focus will get a plus three to eleven plus so as you can see there's ways to build on your attack roll really nice all right so you make the attack roll all right if there are no doubles then it and, and if you meet the if you beat the contest versus that targets defense then your attack is successful all right and it's just you know you would roll damage then but the you have to be equal to or greater than the target's defense. All right, so one more time, 3d6 plus the you know the whatever ability is attached to that weapon, and you can see this is just one weapon group. There are tons of weapon groups in this game, but for the axes group, you can see here is used for fighting. So you would use your fighting skill, and if you're using the bow, that's accuracy, like the example that I used we would use accuracy so that's why I'm using the two different uh, you know abilities to show you that there are two primary abilities that will affect weapon groups and here they are there's you know there's a uh, black powder weapons bows brawling dueling grenades like light, light blades and staves that's all dependent on your accuracy fighting are more strength based weapons axes bludgeons heavy blades lances pole arms spears take the 3 6 the appropriate modifier from that ability and you add in any kind of focus that you have too. well talents can also adjust here to hit also depending on here's you know two hander style you can get uh, some other bonuses for that or if you take shield and sword or if you take uh, you know one single weapon fighting only I mean there or if you take the the brawling focus there's many different types of focuses that you can take and those could also you know adjust your to hit so once you've got all your to hit you've beat your targets defense now it's time to inflict damage so you know here this depends on what type of weapon that you're using every weapon has a different uh, damage range as you can see here in the uh, the axes group there's only three axes in the game in every weapon group there's only three weapons of that weapon group in the game so for the axes group the battle axe is 2d6 
The throw and axe is 1d6 plus 2 for damage. And if you're using the big two-handed axe, it's 3d6. But you have to watch. There's minimum strengths for each one of these weapons. So if you're gonna, if you want to do the big 3d6 damage, you have to have a, a minimum of a three strength to wield that two-handed axe. So don't forget to make sure you meet the minimum requirement for strength. So we'll say that you have the three strength and you're going to inflict your damage. Okay, you've hit, you've swung. You've pierced through your target's armor. You've got. Um, you've pierced through your uh, target's defenses. Now you get to inflict your damage. So you, we're going to roll that two-handed axe damage, 3d6. Now you're also going to get to add your strength modifier, and this is what I really like about Fantasy Age because it doesn't make one stat relevant for every class. You know, it doesn't make just strength the best stat or uh, Dex, the best ability in the game. You know, there's nine abilities in this game, and it spreads them all out to where each ability mechanically improves something for your character. And I really am glad that they did that. Because most other D20 games, they rely on one stat, like dexterity or strength. And those one stats can really you know, make a power, make a character so powerful. But in Fantasy Age, they share the love and spread the wealth of all of the different mechanics for the characters, and I really like that. So your strength ability depends on the amount of damage that you do for a melee weapon. So you would do, I, we would roll the 3d6, and then we would add our strength modifier on there. And just like to hit, you know, your, your talents, they could actually adjust your damage. A magic item could adjust your damage. It can also, a magic item could always uh, adjust your plus to hit as well. So take all of that into consideration when you're attacking and inflicting damage. Definitely take your focuses on whatever type of uh, group of weapons that you're going to be using. Make sure you definitely take those focuses to a 2, and then if you get to a level 11 plus, upgrade them to a plus 3. It's only going to help you. Also, make sure you look at the talents, and those are also going to help you in combat as well. Very cool. So there's a lot going on in combat. Now, the last couple things we want to talk about are the stunt points. And you can generate, you know, this is one of the very awesome things about Fantasy Age. This is one of the this is what actually really turned me on to the game was the stunt system. Now when you roll your 3D6, you have the two dice that are one color, and then you have your off-color die, which is a single die. Now if you roll doubles on any one of those, whether it be the two single die or one die and the stunt die, or all three of them have the same thing you get stunt points. And then that's when you refer to the colored die, the off-color die, and you take that number and you have that many stunt points that you have to use that round. You can't save them, you have to use them. Now when you use the, the stunt points, you can only buy one of each type of stunt. So if you have six stunt points, you're going to be able to do quite a bit with those six stunt points. But you can only buy one of each, except the exception is skirmish for the combat stunts and this is where you can spend up to six so if you have six you know if you have six stunt points you can use skirmish six times and basically move a target 12 yards or you can move yourself 12 yards in any direction two yards for every stunt point you spend there's also rapid reload there's stay aware there's knock prone, defensive stance, disarm, mighty blow. Mighty blow will let you do for two points, let you inflict uh, an extra 1d6 damage on your target. There's pierce armor, there's taunt, there's threaten, lightning attack, makes you have a second attack. Really cool. There's setup, there's dual strike, there's seize the initiative, where you can actually, if you're at the very bottom of the order, for four points you can use seize the initiative, and you can go right back to the top and then if you're at the bottom you're back up to the top of the order guess what you get to go again 
and you'll stay on top until another player uses four stunt points to seize the initiative from you. And then the most popular five points is called Lethal Blow, and this is where you can add an additional 2d6 damage to your, to your uh, roll. So if you're using that two-handed axe, and if you have five stunt points, you're going to do 3d6 plus your strength, plus any other modifiers, plus 2d6 for 5d6 if you have five stunt points. Tell me, what is? there's no other game out there that has a stunt system like this. And that is what is so awesome about Fantasy Age. And I'm so surprised it hasn't been thought of earlier or years ago. So, Chris Pramus, Green Running, great job with the, uh, the stunts. It, it, it's, it's awesome. So, last couple things I want to talk about really quickly uh, is knocking out opponents. Sometimes you may want to just knock out an opponent. You don't want to kill them. Maybe you want to interrogate them later. So, this is where you can basically, you know, hold up your killing blow, and instead of killing them, you'll knock that person unconscious or that NPC unconscious with one health. Now, when he's knocked out, he'll, he'll basically regain his consciousness in 2d6 minutes. So you're probably going to want to bind him, want to gag him, want to do whatever you can, uh, because if that guy comes to, the, if that NPC comes to, it could get away if you're not paying attention to it. And the last thing we'll talk about is uh, delivering a coup de grace. Now, a coup de grace is basically where a dying and unconscious character can be killed by the coup de grace. And this is where if you are standing above uh, someone that is unconscious, that is adjacent to you, you can coup de grace as your major action and automatically kill the target. No roll needed. But if you're the archer and you want a coup de grace with a bow between the eyes, with an arrow between the eyes, then you're going to have to do uh, a successful attack roll against just a defensive 10. So when the person's unconscious, any other modifier that the person has just simply won't count, and you'll have to just hit a defensive 10. Pretty cool. That's everything that you need to really know about combat and Fantasy Age. And it's not only Fantasy Age, but, you know, this is basically how it works in just about every other tabletop game out there. So now that we've talked about everything, let's take a look of an example of a really quick combat simulation. And now I'm really looking forward to this. All right. Oh, yes. This is going to be fun. So this is Fantasy Grounds. And as you can see, I, can have, my, I have my gridded map here. Uh, I also have my party, five party members, and then I have three Hellion monsters. Now, to save time, I've already, I've already rolled initiative, and as you can see here, this is my combat tracker. Now, you can see everyone that is green, with the green smiley faces in the party, and the three Hellions have the red sad face, or the angry face, because those are the enemies of the foes. Now, it is round one. We're just, you know, basically we came into the room. The Hellions were already there. You know, there was no element of surprise, so the party doesn't get to go or the Hellions get to go. We rolled initiative. We have the order, and now Deckard gets to go first. Now, when Deckard gets to go, it is his turn. You can see he's highlighted here. Deckard is a warrior. So Deckard is going to want to be on the front line. So Deckard charges in, okay? Now, when Deckard charges in, he's going to attack this Hellion here, which is Hellion number five. You can see with the number as you humber, hover over it. Now, with my attacks, uh, Deckard can do several things. I can use a short sword, a long bow, or the heavy blaster pistol. But, you know, we're going to say that he has already taken all of our characters, uh, all of our uh, monsters have already had their, you know, they're already ready to go for combat. So... Decker charges in and attacks with a short sword. Now, when I attack with my short sword, the roll is going to come up over here. And when I attack, you're going to see that I rolled 3d6. I rolled a 6, a 4, a 13, and then his modifiers are plus 3 for a total of 16. Now, remember, it's a contest versus the Hellion's defense. So, the, the defense on the Hellion is a 12. I rolled a 16, so that means that my hit is successful. Now I get to roll my short sword damage. 
Short sword damage is going to be 1d6 plus 2, and then I get to add in plus 2 because of my strength. So I rolled, I rolled minimum damage, unfortunately, but I did 5 points of damage. Now, when you do your damage in Fantasy Age, every creature uh, has maybe a, a natural mitigation armor rating, or maybe they're wearing armor that has a natural, uh, that has a, uh, an armor rating that will absorb damage. But in the Hellion's case, they're not. They're just a, a skinned humanoid creature. They have no thick skin. They have no shell on them. They have nothing like that. So their armor rating is a zero, and they take the full brunt of the damage. So Hellion number five just took five total uh, points of damage from Deckard. Now Deckard, uh, as a minor action, really doesn't have anything else to do, uh, so he's going to go ahead and end his turn, and now we'll go to Hellion 5. Now Hellion 5 is now outlined. This is the Hellion that Deckard just attacked. Now, the Hellion is going to go ahead and ignore Deckard, because the, the Hellion has a grenade. Now, the Hellion, they have these acid vials. Now, when you take the acid vial, you have to prepare the grenade. Okay, so the Hellion, out of you know, prepares the grenade. It already had the grenade in his hand. He prepares it with the minor action, and then with the ranged attack, he's going to throw the grenade to a point right here. The Hellion knows the Hellion is an intelligent creature, and the Hellion knows that it can hit three people with one grenade. So, the range on a grenade is only two yards, well, four yards for short range, which would only be halfway. So, seeing that he's throwing eight yards, which is its long range, the Hellion is going to be at a minus two disadvantage. So, I'm going to go ahead and put a modifier in the box down here at minus two. Now, if he fails this, then it the grenade's going to go in a different air, uh, different direction, whatever direction I choose as the game master to put it. Now, if it hits the if it hits the area, it's going to affect all three of these characters. It's going to affect uh, Folly. It's going to affect Lesser, and it's going to affect Glitter. So now the minor action was to prepare the grenade, and now the Hellion has thrown the grenade, and let's see what the attack is. So the target number has to be an 11. Now with the, the minus 2, because he was plus 4, but see that I had the minus 2, it actually dropped it down to a plus 2. So the grenade lands here successfully and now explodes. Bam. When a grenade explodes, it explodes one one uh, or two yards or one square around the square that was where the grenade went to. So it is going to affect this whole, you know, this whole area here. It would affect, see where I'm, I kind of moved glitter to show you. But that's the section that it's going to affect. So glitter is going to be affected, lesser is going to be affected, and folly is going to be affected. Big time damage. So now, they're all going to take 3D, 3d6 damage, so I'm going to go ahead and roll my 3d6 damage uh, for the acid. All right, so Glitter is going to take, ooh, 13 damage. So Glitter uh, has an armor rating of 3, so she'll negate 3 from that for a total of 10 damage. So, wow, she's, uh, she's taken some pretty big damage now. All right, so... She's been hurt pretty bad. She's got 30, basically 29. She's been, you know, dabbled, but she's been taking down a third of her life. Now, also what happens when you use the acid vial is it now reduces your armor rating one. So now she's affected by this acid. And how I'm going to keep track of this is I'm going to, you know, if you're playing around a table, you'll have bottle caps or marbles or markers to indicate effects on your players. So I'm going to take a condition uh, that I named Acid Vial and put minus one to armor rating uh, on Glitter. So you can see now that she's going to have minus one to armor rating. And I'm also going to put it on uh, Folly because she was affected. 
And I'm also going to go ahead and put it on Lester because he was hitting a blast. So now all three of them are minus one to their armor ratings. So now I'm going to roll damage on the other two characters. So Lester is going to take a total of 11 damage. His mitigation is three, so he's going to take an eight. So he has eight wounds on him now. All right. Next, Folly. I'm going to roll 3d6 damage on her. Roll that. She takes a total of 9. Folly's armor is 3. She's going to take a total of 6 wounds. Alright. Now, next round, if they take any damage, uh, they're going to be taking 1 point more because now their armor rating is down 1 more. So that's pretty much it for the, for the Hellion this round. The Hellion did a really good thing and uh, hurt three of the party members. Really good. So next we're going to go to Glitter. Now Glitter, she is a, a, she's a healer, but she knows that the party can take quite a bit uh, of, of you know, damage before she has to start breaking out any kind of heals. So not only is she a healer, she's also uh, a, f a fire nuker. So we're going to go ahead and open up her sheet here and we're going to look at her, uh, her, her spells. And uh, she is going to go ahead and do a Flame Blast on this first Hellion here. Now, as she prepares her spell, uh, it is an attack spell. You can see it does take a major action to use. All right, So she's going to take her movement which is going to be our minor. She's going to move over here to get a little bit of a better view. And she's going to go ahead and now, as she casts Flame Blast, she's going to need to make a successful roll against the Hellion. Okay? So the successful target number that she has to have is a 12. So let's go ahead, uh, open her sheet back up, and let's do her contest number uh, of a plus 12. Now, for her, it's going to be a 3d6 plus her intelligence plus any kind of focus that she has for fire spells. She doesn't have any kind of intelligence focuses yet. Uh, so, oh, wrong sheet. I'm going to go to uh, glitters right here. I'm sorry about that. So we're going to go here. Uh, her target roll for fire spells is right here. Sorry about that. I'm looking at their uh, their character sheet. So it's going to be a 3d6 plus 4 for fire. So we rolled. The target number is 12. She rolled a 16. Uh, you can see that she rolled no doubles. So she got, she's got she got no stunt points. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and do damage now because she successfully hit with her spell. Now Flame Blast, to go back here to Flame Blast, now it's successful, the target is going to need to do a uh, contest or a dexterity acrobatics versus her spell power. So we're going to go ahead and go back to the Hellion here. And the Hellion is going to have to do dexterity acrobatics. It does not have acrobatics, it just has dexterity. So it's going to be a 3d6 plus 2 check and we're going to have to to do that versus glitter's spell power which glitter's spell power as soon as i can get glitter's sheet open back up and sorry it's taking a little bit longer for me to do it because i'm doing all of this by myself so the target number for her fire spell uh for the the contest is 13. so the hellion was successful does not take any kind of damage from flame blast except for half. It's not going to be, uh, you know, basically what if it would have failed it, then anyone hit by the blast would have taken 2d6. But, you know, seeing that, uh, you know, he was successful, then he only takes 1d6. And we'll go ahead and, and uh, oops, we'll go ahead and get that 1d6 in there. All right. So it'll be a 1d6, which would be a 4 plus one for a total of five. They have, you know, like I said, they have zero uh, 
armor rating, so it's going to take f uh, basically five more pure damage, and that's for Hellion Five. So now, out of you know the 15 hit points that Hellion Number Five had, he's got 10 wounds against him, meaning he has five hit points left. So he's in pretty bad shape and probably you know visually starting to stumble around and whatnot, maybe start to show signs of blood coming out of wounds and whatnot. So now, Glitter, she's done her minor action for moving. She's cast her, her, her spell that successfully hit the, the Hellion. And now we're going to go to Hellion 6. Hellion 6 is going to go ahead and move up and engage Deckard. Now, <clears throat> when Hellion 6 moves up to engage Deckard, now Deckard is surrounded by two foes. Now this is going to give Hellion number 6 a plus 2 to his roll because there's more than one person, you know, flanking the opponent. Excuse me, my mouth is getting, uh, my throat is getting dry, so... Now, he's going to get a plus two modifier. And this Hellion, the only thing that the Hellion's going to do is just flat out try to bite Deckard. And it's going to be a, a 3d6 plus four plus two because of the, the you know, the bonus uh, is a DM bonus that, you know, basically more than one target around you. So the Hellion attacks Deckard, and, uh, ooh, wow, uh, stunts too with six points. Fourteen uh, versus the defense of Deckard, which is twelve. That's a hit. So now we get to roll damage, and we get six stunt points, because you see, of the three dice that we rolled, we rolled doubles, which was the ones, and then the stunt die here, which is the off-color die, we get six stunt points. So you can just imagine uh, what I'm going to do. So we're going to go ahead and uh, give Deckard some damage, which is going to be a total of... Uh, I'm going to do a modifier here, and then it's going to be uh, 1d6, 2d6, 3d6, because I'm going to spend five of those six stunt points, and I'm going to go ahead and lethal blow him for 3d6 plus three. So that's going to be a pretty big hit, and wow, is it ever. So I hit him for 17 damage. His armor is 4. So he's going to take 13 wounds. He's going to take 13 wounds. That is pretty, that's a pretty hefty hit. But he's got 46 hit points. So it really, I mean, it really doesn't, really doesn't phase him. Too bad. It takes about 25% of his life. Now... Deckard's been hit. I spent five points on Lethal Blow. I'm going to spend my last point, uh, as you can see here. I'm going to use uh, Skirmish, and this is where I can move myself or the target two yards. And I'm, I'm basically going to push him back. I want to push him back towards his party members. Now, my turn is done for Hellion number six. That's how the stunt, stunt points work now. Now it's Folly's turn. Folly... Uh, she is a rogue. She is good with bows, and that is what she is going to do. So, Folly, she's already seen Deckard hit Hellion number five. She's seen the, the flame engulf the Hellion from Glitter. So, now Folly is going to take a move action, which is her minor, and she's going to get back. Now, her range is, is she's got a bow, she's got plenty of range. So now Folly uh, is going to go ahead and, and, I'm sorry, not her, her bow, but her uh, blaster rifle. Now, this is uh, the blaster rifle. This is my Titan's Grave game, and I'm using my party's characters as examples. So, you know, in a fantasy setting, there are black powder weapons. Now, if you're playing the Titan's Grave setting, which is sci-fi, there are no black powder weapons because it, t it, it says to take those out. Powder wasn't really discovered, but technology was, so there's heavy blasters and heavy blaster pistols, rifles, sweepers, you know, all that good stuff. So, for this, attacking the Hellions, she pulls out her, her blaster rifle, lowers it down, and fires again on number five. It seems like everybody is trying to focus fire on this first Hellion to try to take it out. So, she, you know, gets no type of plus modifier, nothing like that, and she shoots. Now, when she shoots, she uh, shoots for a 13. You can see that she has no 
no doubles, so she gets no stunt points. Uh, but she hits. The Hellion has that defense of 12. So now she's going to roll a, uh, a 3d6 plus 2 for her blaster rifle damage. And when she rolls it, uh, the Hellion takes a total of 7 damage. Uh, it has no mitigation, so you can see it takes it to 17, which takes it over the health. Basically, Folly has killed Hellion number 5. So, you know, you, you can basically just, I'm going to just delete it right out of the tracker. When I delete it, it'll just delete it off of the map, and Folly is now done with her turn. Now we go to Gideon. Gideon is another fighter, all right? Gideon is a dwarf. He loves to fight. So get, uh, old Gideon, he's going to move up. Gideon moves up. Uh, now you can see that the, the verse has been, uh, you know, basically flip-flopped on the Hellion. And now the Hellion is in a disadvantage because he's got multiple people around him. So I'm going to give Gideon a plus two modifier. As you can see down here, I gave him a plus two. And I will attack with my battle axe. He is a... Uh, true dwarf he uses a battle axe and he swings oh and he crushes him with an 18 versus his 12 defense there are no doubles so no stunt points and now he gets to do his damage his damage is going to be a total of eight and the hellion no natural armor uh, so hellion number six takes the eight wounds all right eight damage gideon's done his turn uh, he's moved up, performed his major action, he's done, he passes the puck to Lester. Lester, he is a mage. Lester is not a healer. Lester is not a damage doer. Lester is more of a support character, and he loves to throw grenades. So, Lester uh, is, is going to survey the battlefield. He knows that he has plenty of magic, he sees that the party is starting to uh, overwhelm the two other Hellions. He is going to save his magic. He is going to save all of his power uh, until the next round. However, Lester is going to take a movement. Uh, Lester's movement is... Let's see, what is Lester's movement? His speed is an 11. So I get to move five squares, basically. It's 11... Uh, uh, divided by two, rounded down, basically. So remember, each one of these squares equals two feet. So two, four, six, eight, ten yards. Lester kind of goes to the corner, surveys the battlefield, and as another, uh, as another, uh, as his major action, he basically takes the defense action. Remember, there's the the, the total defense action. So we're going to go in there, go into the conditions. Now, here it is right here. Defensive stance. I'm going to put this on Lester to remind us that he now has a plus two defense until the beginning of his next turn. So Lester is done. Now, last but not least, we're going to go to Hellion number four up here. And we're going to go ahead and make this guy basically retreat. Uh, his, we'll say that his morale has been shattered. Uh, he sees that two of his Hellions are fixing to die. And as an intelligent creature, he doesn't want to be the third. So the Hellion is going to travel back to the Alpha and get the Alpha to come and engage the party. So as uh, the Hellion uses its major action to run, it will get double movement and disappears off of the map. We'll put him as invisible. The players won't be able to see him. And that was then the first round of combat. So we go to the top of round two. And you can see we're in round two now. It's Decker's turn again. And now this one Hellion is surrounded by five pretty angry party members. So there is one full round of combat between enemies and your party. I hope you guys learned a lot. Uh, all of you new players out there to tabletop games or new to Fantasy Grounds. Fantasy Grounds is a great system. As you can see, one round of combat. Even I was playing the characters all by myself. Everything went pretty quickly with uh, a total of eight, and well, eight PCs and NPCs in a, in a round. It went pretty quick. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. 
If you guys have any questions, uh, any kind of comments, please feel free to leave them down in the comments section down below. Also, if you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel, please subscribe. And also like the video and share it if you have other people that are new to the games and, and want to show them an example of combat. Because like I said, even though these are the Fantasy Age mechanics, it pretty much works the same in just about any other type of tabletop game anyway. So until next time, thank you guys again. 